Welcome to another training demo from 3dquakers.com. My name is Sharbel Quake and today I'm going to show you our new technical director training series for Softimage XSI. This series will focus on creating scripted operators, scripts and plugins to create tools for animation and rigging. One of these tools is called Dynamo and it's a tool that helps in the creation of secondary motion for rigs and characters. To start off, I'm going to go to Dynamo and open the control panel for that. And here the first thing I have to do is set the number of elements in my chain and the offset between these elements. So for example, let's choose 4 and the offset, let's set it to 1. Here we have the options to parent, add bones and use stretchy bones. I'm going to leave all three on and I'm going to create a Dynamo chain. Whenever this is done, I can now grab the root and interactively move around and I'll see the chain reacting. But the root is not the only object you can grab, you can grab whatever you like and the rest of the chain will behave dynamically like so. This is due to the fact that the bones are stretchy because that's what I chose here and all of them can be animated independently of the rest. Now, if I branch select, control D, duplicate it, and just place this one over here, and parented it to that link here, the whole chain will react dynamically. If I look at my explorer, I will see that I just have the root, which is this object here, which I can rename to anything I like, for example, uh, spring root and everything else is parented underneath that. So that's the Dynamo chain with the stretchy bones feature. Okay, let's take this one now and place it here and let's look at the wave generator. The wave generator is another feature of the Dynamo plugin and it creates a frequency generator null. So if I add it, I'm going to have its property page open right away. And here, I'm going to just grab the root of that, just scale it up a little bit, and place it here. Now if I hit play right away, I'm going to see that by default, the amplitude in the Y rotation is set to 10, and that's 10 degrees. So if I set it to 45 degrees, it's going to rotate by 45 degrees. So this will create a periodic motion for the red null over here. This periodic motion can be a rotation or a position wave. I'm going to grab now the root of my dynamo chain and parent it to that. And whenever I do this, I'm going to have the chain, of course, follow the rotation of the wave gen. I'm going to set this to zero, and if I increase the amplitude here, it's going to rotate in X, and that's also rotating in Z, and of course I can increase that also to create procedural motion for my objects. Now, let's delete all these. Another use for both would be to create, for example, a fish rig if I set my number, say to 7, and create a dynamo chain, and I'm going to add another wave generator, I'm going to grab the root of the dynamo chain and parent it underneath the wave gen, and here I'm going to have a fish-like motion for my chain. Of course, I can increase the amplitude and I can increase the frequency and my chain will behave accordingly. Now, if I wanted to animate the position of this, all I have to do is grab the root of the wave gen and animate it anywhere I like and both motions will be added together. Also, I can animate the frequency 
in position. So if I set the X amplitude to 1, let's set the frequency back to 0 0.2, I can get very easily a worm-like motion and I can of course animate the worm moving by animating the root of the wave generator. Let's create another dynamo chain. If we go to modify, we can change the properties of chains. So let's grab this and move it to the side and create another one and place it here. Now let's take this one and change its properties. For example, I'm going to give it less stiffness, less damping and a lower mass. And I'm going to apply the changes to the chain. Then I'm going to create a null and I'm going to parent the two objects to the null. Each chain will behave differently because of the different parameters. Now let's say that I like these parameters better than these. All I have to do is select one of the chains, get from chain. So these parameters are captured over here and I can select the new one and apply to chain and now both will have the same parameters applied. Another feature is the multiplier. So if I reduce the multiplier, the springing effect will be dampened down. So if I apply this to the first chain, I will see that the motion is more dampened than the first one. This is very important because not every time you're creating dynamic motion, you want the motion to be so exaggerated. So to just dampen it down, you reduce the multiplier value. Another feature is the Y spring. And when I increase that, the chain is going to be stretchy. So if I went like this now, I would see that the chain at the left is stretchy while the one at the right is not. Let's hide the uh, balls so that we just focus on the actual chain. And the amount of stretchiness is controlled by this value here. So if I reduce that, it's going to become less stretchy and so forth. This is very important for cartoony characters. And at any time, you can just grab any of the links and just modify it, put it anywhere you like, and the chain will still behave normally. Now you have options to hide and show the balls, the boxes, and the bones. Most probably you're going to keep the bones but the boxes are important for reforming the shape of the chain. Of course, you have options to plot the animation of a certain chain and unplot it to create keyframes and that would mute out the dynamic calculations. The last thing I want to show is the make chain dynamic which is a very useful feature to turn any chain into a dynamic chain so if i go to my front view and i turn on symmetry and i create say a 2d chain if you selected the root of any of the chains and you hit make chain dynamic that chain will become dynamic so now I turn both into dynamic chains and um, I'm going to hide the balls for now. So if I grab these, I'll see that the chains are now dynamic. If I see that the motion is too exaggerated, all I have to do is select any part of the chain and set the multiplier down, say to 0.25 and apply to whichever chain. Of course I have the stretching on so I can reduce the Y spring and now the chains are no longer stretchy. So that's in brief the gist of the technical director training series. The main focus is to create the Dynamo and Wave Generator plugins, but along the way we're going to be learning a lot about building 
custom constraints using vectors, matrices, and transformations to control the behavior of objects inside XSI with scripting. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed this demo.